I'd rather be a fool for God any day than to look right in the eyes of man. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. I think, hold on, don't sit quite yet, because Pastor Darren called out five things, and we only did three, and so I like to be correct and make sure that we get all five. Amen? So I want you to think of somebody who needs this hallelujah. It might be a single person. It might be a group of people. It might be a nation. They need a hallelujah. What are the, Ray, can you pull up those lyrics? I raise a hallelujah, and then it, it said what it does. I raise a hallelujah with everything inside of me. I raise a hallelujah. I will watch the darkness flee. I raise a hallelujah in the middle of the mystery. I raise a hallelujah fear you've lost your hold on me. So there are people. It could be the person sitting beside you. It could be the person who couldn't make it to church today. It could be the person who's an ICU. It could be, it could be anybody. And we have the ability to be able to pray for them and to be able to release a hallelujah. So I want you to dig down deep and we're going to pull out two more because Pastor Darren called out five issues today. So Father, we want to raise a hallelujah. We want to throw it into the air and into the atmosphere and see your kingdom come. And so we ask, Father, that you would anoint our hallelujahs as we look to you, that you would break forth on our family's behalf, on our community's behalf, on our province's behalf, on our nation's behalf, and on the nations of the world's behalf. On the count of three, one, two, three. Hallelujah! On the count of three, one, two, three. All the kids said, hallelujah, that's awesome. Now you may be seated. Now, Miss Heather, you got stuff. So we have a few announcements. Praise God, that's so awesome. You know what, if you felt like you've never done anything significant in your life, you can cancel that off your list because you just did. Amen? Turn to your neighbor and say, you make a difference. Now turn to your other neighbor so they don't feel left out because we're Canadian. <laughs> Amen. We also have some good news. It's pumpkin spice latte day. We can praise the Lord and enjoy good drinks. Amen. That's after the service. We have, oh. We did our first of three home groups this uh, past Wednesday. It was awesome. And we're just going through portions of, uh, there's a study called Crazy Faith. And it's called Crazy Faith only until it happens. There's those crazy things in life. You're like, that's crazy. I shouldn't even believe for that. But you do. And God comes through for you. That now becomes crazy faith. We believe that that's in this house and we want to cultivate it. We want to harvest it. We want to pull it out and release it in the atmosphere. And so that's on Wednesday evening. And we do it through Zoom. So we've been asking for people to join in your homes, which you did. Quite a few did. And if you couldn't join with somebody, do you know why it's so important to be with somebody? Because we were never meant to be alone. God takes the solitary and he puts them in families. God takes the lonely and he puts them in with other people. So that's why we're always saying, please try and gather with somebody. And then it's so good to pray together. Like I, a lot of time as Christians, we don't pray for our brother and sister. And we just count on it on our little two-hour adventure here. That's really not enough, is it? So that's on Wednesday night. Consider joining. It, it will be beneficial to you. Um, it will be beneficial to your life. And it's an hour of your life. Amen? So that's Wednesday. We have the men's conference coming up. How many men do we have in the house? Yeah. One. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. How many men do we have in this house? Stand up, man. Ah, thank you. Thank you. 
Well, yeah. Thank you, man. One man. David, I know. So uh, this particular men's conference, you know, I can only speak as a wife. He could speak as the other part. I can tell you that our men are under assignment. Amen, ladies? They are under an attack to rob them of their masculinity, to rob them from being the mighty man of God, to rob them from being the humble man of God, to be the gentle soul, to be the strong leader of the family. Strong doesn't mean arrogant, just confident. And our men, you need an encounter with Christ. You worship differently when you're there on a purpose. He worships differently when I'm not around. I worship differently at the women's conferences. It's like there's no inhibitions at all. And so uh, the conference is in Grand Prairie, and they've waived the registration fee because they want you there. But they also want you to register so they know how many seats they're setting up and that sort of thing. And, you know, some of those titles sound dumb. I know. Whatever find your get free focused in the fight if you say that mocking it sounds pathetic but if you say it manly and full of masculinity get free and focused in the fight you see you see how tone changes everything for all you Arnolds out there yeah really um Consider it. It's at the end of this month. And consider it an investment into you, into your family, into the things that you want to break through for. In fact, they're going to have, uh, I think the worship team is from Spruce Grove. And these guys can worship deep, deep. And the presence of God flows there. When you get a room full, by the way, this is expected to pack out. So you should probably sign up while you can. It's going to be a time of just guys worshiping. And in this setting this morning, when we all get to worship, is phenomenal. But when you get all guys and they're like this baritone worship, there's something phenomenal that happens. If you can get a man to be courageous, anything can happen. And in that setting, when it's just all men, it usually takes just one guy. They'll have an altar call. And most guys are going, I ain't going up. No way, man. And one guy goes to the front and they see the breakthrough and it starts this waterfall of men going up. And when men can get an impartation and filled up with the presence of God, the kingdom of darkness suffers badly. So men, let's go. Yeah, amen. Let's have our kids come on up here. And right after we do our kids, we're going to do a baby dedication. Do we have kids? We have a lot of little people. Come on up, little people. so funny. I stand on this side and they all go to that side. I love it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay, kids, I want you to point those holy, God-filled hands towards these grown-ups. Some of them need to smile. So, yeah, no, you put your hands down. We're going to pray for you today. We're the kids. Oh, yeah, we're going to pray for it. Two hands up. Shoot them out. Ready for lightning. Lord, we bless these grown-ups. Lord, the moms and the dads and the grandmas and the grandpas. Lord, we bless them because they need you today, Jesus. They need you more than even coffee. They need you to be happy. Lord, we bless our moms and dads. We ask that they wouldn't be grumpy and get mad at us today, but they would be full of grace. But Jesus... We ask that they would encounter you today because you make everything right. In Jesus' name. And the kids said, amen. And the grown-ups who received that say, amen. they received your prayer. That's awesome. Thanks, guys. Oxley, watch your shoelaces. Mm. Amen. So we have... Um, we would like the new mom and dad, Kristen and Anita, to come up. And grandparents, please, we're going to dedicate this new little, which was very recently a bump in the tummy, is now in the arms. Now I have to... Elias Asher Ditchburn. Do we have someone who can take pictures for them? Come on. No, you 
get up here, Grandpa. First time grandparents, all on both sides, right? Well, yes, Samuel is in Edmonton and Sonia is in Thailand. This may be all on you guys to produce for these families, these grandparents. So we'll start with this baby, amen? All right. This is also how you build a church as well, amen? Uh, Elias Asher, which means this. The meaning is God is my salvation. Spiritual meaning is the spokesperson or mouthpiece for God. And here's the scripture that goes with this. Do not worry about how or what you should answer or what you should say. For the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour what you ought to say. I'll take some of that too. My goodness. Here's, here's what I want to do, guys. Um, this isn't near as ritualistic as you think, as this is far more an impartation and an opportunity with God. When you say, the Lord bless you, there's an actual spiritual, supernatural force, and it happens. Can we extend our hand to this family as well? This is what we're going to do this morning. We're going to bless this family and bless this little baby in Jesus' mighty name. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on just a moment here. Whoa. Whoa. Father, thank you for stirring up your kingdom and stirring up the gifts in this little one as well. Boy, this little one just came from you, Lord. But Father, we bless this one. And we ask that your grace, your grace, your grace would be upon this little one in Jesus' name. Lord, as we dedicate this one back to you, that your eye would guide, that your hand would lead, we even ask right now, that this little one's path would always be before. Lord, that the crooked places you would even make straight. Oh, Lord, okay. You know what? I just see this little one blessing the generations even before. This little one being able to move and even bless those in your family that are older and have been here longer. Father, thank you for this beautiful gift, and we ask that you would continue to do this work and develop in Jesus' name, thank you that your angels are also around this little one. And when the enemy comes to lie, thank you that you are harsh with the enemy. You beat back his foes, even like you did with David. In Jesus' mighty name, thank you for the prophetic call, your call on this one. In Jesus' mighty name, thank you, Lord. Woo. So dedicating Elias is an absolute blessing, but it's also for the parents, for you to be charged with taking responsibility, more than just the dirty diapers, but praying for his whole life. And as us as a church, that's where we come in as well. And, you know, as I look at Elias, I think of, you know, that the power of a name, of him being a spokesperson for God. It changes the way that I'm going to speak to this little boy. His name, Asher, is blessed and fortunate. And it says, Psalm 1611, it says, You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. <laughs> At your right hand are your pleasures forevermore. And every time we call out his name, that's what the Lord hears. He hears a scripture. And we need to remember the power of a name over our kids and over our grandkids. But over the parents and grandparents... You are embarking on the greatest adventure of parenthood. Amen. And so, Lord, we, we do dedicate baby Elias back to you. But we also dedicate this family, Lord, to stand by you, to seek you daily for his life, for their life, for the pathway, for Elias' generation even, Lord. We bless these grandparents to stand as gatekeepers. We bless them, Lord, as they care for Chris and Anita, as they care for their children, their grandchildren. Father, you would anoint the grandparents. You would anoint Chris and Anita to parent Elias in the, in the way that he needs to be. In Jesus' name, amen. So can we say this together? Say, Elias, we bless you. 
Say, parents, we bless you. Say, grandparents, we bless you. So, Father, let the blessing of the Lord be upon them. In Jesus' name, the empowerment of the Lord. And especially for Elias, right up till that next stage, let this blessing be on him, the empowerment of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, give them a gentle hand because baby's sleeping, okay? Baby's sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was kidding. Come on, give him a hand. Awesome. Thank you. Churchill area, and the deeper we got back there, the more beautiful it became, and I was just stunned by, Lord, you're so good. You're so crazy good. So last night, Angie and I were just dwelling on, and it didn't take very long, on how good God is and where he's brought us to. And it took, like, in real time of talking, maybe 30 seconds and we were overwhelmed by what God's done for us how far he's brought us and there was no end to we could have just talked about how good God is and what he's done and how he's taken us from here to here which the Bible calls from glory to glory he's been so crazy good that is not even to mention that's just his goodness that's not even to mention the times that he saved my life that I should be dead It's too easy to forget. So thank you, Lord, for days called Thanksgiving. Can I get an amen? amen. Thank you, Lord. Can we give him, please, a praise clap? It is, it, is, it is an expression of how good he is. Thank you, Adrian. So, Lord, you're so good. And, God, we could, we could tell about your goodness and... and and your stories and the people you've saved. And uh, I think I've lost count of how many times I should be dead. And, and some of you probably have the same stories, but I mean, whether they're um, car accidents, a lot of animals, and not small, like the big ones, like elk, I've seen a moose, my goodness, we should be dead. Pig. Pig. I hit a pig. <laughs> we have no idea where it came from. And it was, it was like, it was in a Mustang, which had like this much clearance. And we were coming around a corner, and it's not just a pig. Like, this is out of like a Walt Disney something or other. It's a pig with piglets. No, listen to this. Listen, there was no, there was no death. There was nothing like that. So you come around the corner. You can't do nothing about it. And so I can't cross into their lane, so you just kind of clinch like this, and nothing happened. And you, you just keep going, and you're looking at each other afterwards going, how did nothing happen? I don't know how many deer, how many elk, how many moose should be dead. I were on our, we were just riding up the hill on our motorcycles, and I just came around a corner, and a deer comes running right out at me. And uh, I actually didn't have any time to do anything, so I lifted up my leg like this, because that's where I was going to get hit. And all I could hear was hoofs going in reverse, full blast on the pavement like this. And I would be, I would be really surprised if you could have got a piece of paper in between that deer and me. And how it never hit, I have no idea. We've, we've had uh, campers, trucks, blow their tires off, three-quarters on big tires, blow their tire off and head straight at us as we're doing 80 or 90K or whatever it is. Should be dead. And it's coming, and I'm going, well, okay, I guess that's it. And it comes bounding at us, and it goes, turn, off it goes. How many times God has saved me from death? If you think that God has no purpose and call on your life, you be fooled today. 
because God has a purpose for you. Amen. Lord, that's just your protection over us. That's not even... God, I'm, I'm asking that you would cause people to take stock today of how good you are, your goodness in our lives. Lord, this bombardment of media and bad stuff, Lord, we chuck it to the side and say, you can't come here right now. This is the place of the Lord. So stir up, Lord, love and good works in every person here. In Jesus' name, let our hearts be tender towards your word today. And Father, um, yeah, Lord, just don't let us have our heads hung low and look at stuff that doesn't even profit us. Father, I ask, Holy Spirit, just stir up in each one a grateful, grateful heart. God would change the earth with that. So thank you for doing it today. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So with the Lord, nothing's impossible. Just want you to know. True story. Amen. Um, I was remembering there's a Christian scientist. She used to work for NASA, actually. Her name was Iko Horman. And uh, she, she had this quote. Like, she would actually travel around to the churches because she discovered that science, all it does is just confirm God. Doesn't, doesn't, science doesn't prove that he's not real. It confirms him. And so she would go around and she would say this. She would say, the spiritual realm, God's spiritual supernatural is up to 10 times more real than the natural. I have no idea how she came up with this, but you can just take it like this. She's saying this. It's really, really real and affects this. And so she would, uh, she had a way of gauging energy and she would go into hospitals especially and she said with her gauge, she could go into a room and she could tell whether people were first believers or not believers. She could tell whether that they were dwelling on uh, good supernatural positive things or negative things. So she was kind of taking it to this extent. She could tell by this gauge on the energy in whether you were entertaining the kingdom of God, his goodness and the angelic, or you were ent entertaining the kingdom of darkness and negativity and nasty. Amen? And so I would have, I, I heard her speak too, powerful. And the presence of God with her, whoa! Thankfulness is a supernatural force. Oh, my goodness. Amen. So think of it like this. Um, I think it's Luke 10. Jesus is sending out the 70 and empowering them. We talked a little bit about it. But some of the things that I would dwell on that just messed me up was he would go like this. First, he said, my peace I give to you. And then he says this, go out um, and that place that you go to, if it's worthy, let your peace remain there. As if this peace that you have that he gave you would do something. It would actually change an atmosphere. It would bless the people. It would open up the kingdom of heaven and cause supernatural to happen. Amen. Or he would say this, and this is the side I thought, man, this is a little bit scary. When he would say this, if that place is not worthy, Take your peace back. Like, oh. And then he would go even further than this. And he'd say, the town that you're in, if they reject you, they're rejecting me. And if they reject you, you can shake the dust off your feet. But then he went on and said this, and it would be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah than what's going to happen to that place. And I'm like, are you kidding? You've given us that much? Yes, he has. Say Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is also a grace that God has given. It is a supernatural power that he's given the church. So, Father, even today, uh, Lord, cool worship, and thank you for uh, a beautiful baby dedication. But, Lord, now I'm asking for the ministry of life and that your words would go in. They would find a place. So, devil, the Lord laugh at you first and rebuke you. So any deaf, dumb spirit, you can't operate here. You let the people of God go. 
I thank you right now that they've come to hear and to listen, that you're going to give eyes to see, ears that hear, hearts that perceive and understand what the will of the Lord is. Thank you for a bunch of awesome kids who will listen to the word and move out in simplicity and truth and change the very world around them, knowing that your word is not some sort of ritual, but supernatural and will always accomplish what it's been sent to do. In Jesus' name. Please say thankful and say generous. Now, I just want to tell you a few things and then we'll, we'll read the word. Um, these are things that I just find cool. They're like, they're, I don't know, milestones. They're stamps that are stamped in me and I'm, I can't stop dwelling on them during my life. Like the peace thing. Are you kidding? Our peace does that? Or here's another one. This is just a stamp. It's like Hebrews 2. 14-ish, something like that. You guys can be like the Bereans and check it out later. Um, he says this, that Jesus has come to destroy him who had the power of death. That is the devil. And release those who from their whole life were subject to bondage or fear. Jesus came to do that. So let's say this. Say the devil had power. Then he sends out the 70 in Luke 10. And he says something even more cool, a bigger stamp. And he says, behold, I give you all authority that you could step on snakes and scorpions and overcome all the power of the wicked one and nothing would by in any means harm you. I mean, you feel like flexing right after you hear something like that. Are you kidding? You do that? Yes. So they went out, they did it, they came back. And the Bible records this. They had some serious joy. And Jesus is going, yes, it's awesome, but don't rejoice in this. Rejoice because your names are written in the Lamb's book of life. And then it says, Jesus had joy and rejoiced. Are you kidding? All because people would step out and trust God and be thankful. These are like... Um, Serious markers that Christians are not powerless, but we have given to us tremendous graces, peace being one, thanksgiving being another one. Amen. I want to show you. Uh, first Thessalonians 5, please, can, if you can put that up there. There's got to be more than that. That's good. Oh, <laughs> yeah, well, one at a time. Here we go. Very tricky. Okay, let's do another one. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Okay. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God for your life. Um, thanksgiving starts here. And, and when... When it's been saturated, it comes out here. Thanksgiving starts here. And when it comes out here is when it's been saturated. Why is it the will of God for your life? Let's have a look. Oh, that's what I was going to do. I have an example for you today. Yay. Can you help me, Angie? Bring the whole thing out, please. Okay, let's put it up here. Now, no, I still need you, please. Say this, please. Say, humor him. Yeah, humor me. I, wa I want you to... I, I was just thinking of Thanksgiving, and this is, this is probably not the best example, but let it work, okay? This, this is Thanksgiving. We're, we're just going to call this, that this, this little towel here is the ability to give thanks. And without anything on it, it's pretty dry, and all it'll really do is just kind of pick up dust. But if you saturate, just pour water on that, please. If you saturate 
thanksgiving, keep going, with the presence of God, if you saturate a heart of thanksgiving with the goodness of God and with the love of God, it gets everywhere. Thanksgiving on its own, without the love of God, it's dry. All it can really do is pick up dust. But my goodness, look at this thing. Look at this. When it's saturated with the love of God, you get, it's just water, gratitude everywhere. All the freaks and all the people are thinking, the carpet, the carpet. (laughs) If you saturate a heart with the goodness of God and the love of God, this thanksgiving gets everywhere. The Bible actually calls that the original um, uh, text in the King James. Love was called charity. Charity is an act of giving out. If God touches your heart in thanksgiving, what comes out is charity, is gratitude. Amen? My goodness. Thank you. Thank you, Vanna. We're going to do an offering at the end of the service today. Proverbs, please. Q Ray. Look at this. Do not withhold good from those to whom it's due when it's in your power of your hand to do so, which probably sounds kind of literal. Um, Guys, as Christians, we can be really cheap sometimes. Amen? Oh, no amens. We can try and justify our way out of stuff and, uh, man, that's not right. So no condemnation. Look, at here's what, here's what good means. Because we'll try and justify it. Well, what's good mean? Good means this. Good in the widest sense. Good. Good things. Beautiful, best, better, bountiful. Favor, fine, deed, gracious, kindness, pleasant, precious, prosperity, wealth, where, welfare. So it's like the, the widest sense. It's like, yes. The ability to do good. Now look at this. When it's in your power of your hand to do so, you might think it means this. When it's in the ability of your hand to do so, but that word power doesn't mean that. That word power actually means this. God-like might. In other words, you can take this word to the same outpouring when God moves on you in might, doing good isn't the ability to do good. It's actually partnering with God and causing the ability to do mighty works. Amen? Amen. Lord bless Ivan exceedingly. There's another man who Probably the enemy has tried to kill so many times, and yet, Lord, you continue to bless him. You continue to uphold him. You continue to cause life to come forward in him. So we bless him exceedingly in Jesus' name. Amen. Your thankfulness and your giving can bring the kingdom of God and his power supernatural to change the very natural realm. Amen? Don't hold back when it's in your power, God-like power to do good. Because if God gets a hold of your heart and he saturates it with his love, gratitude and supernatural power will come out all over the place. Amen? Thank you, Lord. So I looked up um, thankfulness, and I went to, like, 
seven different dictionaries just to find out what a good definition would be. And after going through seven dictionaries, here's what I've come up with. Number one is this, and it's not up there, so if you're taking notes, that's great, or just listen. Number one, thankful, this is what thankfulness means, being thankful and glad about something that's happened, especially because without it, the situation would have been much worse. That sounds like this, doesn't it? Being thankful and glad about something that's happened, especially because without it, that situation would have been much worse. My goodness. Number two is this. Feeling or expressing gratitude. The outworking of his power. So, um, can you put up that victory picture, please? That's good. I was going through this and going, Lord, you've been so good to your people. You've been so good. You shower us with your kindness, with your love. You cause us to move in supernatural power. You allow us to partner with you. You've been so crazy good to us. And victory as a whole, they do some amazing things. I mean, let me, let me read this to you. Uh, they have children's homes in Haiti, in India, in Kenya, in Myanmar. They have children's schools in Haiti, in India, uh, Kenya, Pakistan, Rwanda. They have ministries actually to stop human trafficking. What an awesome thing to do. And so I started looking through, and they always do like a, a Christmas drive um, where they're, they're asking all the churches to pitch in. So I just started going through it and started to look at this. They're also doing a project of Zambia uh, getting fresh water. I think it's something like they have to... Is there another picture on there? Yeah. They have to actually roll or carry... Uh, bottles, I think two or four kilometers, just to get their fresh water. We abound in this. We have, like, my goodness, we can make a difference. Amen? So I thought, what if today, what if today, instead of uh, just taking a normal offering, what if today we purposed in our heart to have a heart of gratitude and a thankful heart and to do good? Because the reality was this. All it takes is this, just, just a little bit. In fact, um, Lord, we can become performers. We just can. And we can try and put on a good show, and maybe people will remember whatever, God. Lord, if you touch the hearts of your people, if you allow, God, your goodness to get upon our hearts, Lord, it'll produce gratitude, and that gratitude will be an outworking, and it'll get all over the place. So, Lord, I'm going to ask right now that for every person here, you wouldn't squeeze them to get money out of them. God forbid. But, Lord, would you allow thankfulness to come into our own heart? Would you bring to remembrance how good you are to your people? And, Lord, if we remember how good you are, would you allow it to turn into gratitude? And Father, even as we take a free offering, a free will offering today, that no one's under pressure, it's not about some big mass amount, but it's about the heart that we give with. Father, thank you for your goodness today. In Jesus' name. Um, Ray, did I give you the Hebrew scripture? Can you put it up there, please? Now, here's another one of those stamps where you're reading along, and all of a sudden, boom, everything gets very, very supernatural. And Hebrews, the writer, is starting to describe the place that you've come to. So he's, he's basically saying this. It is so good that you've accepted Jesus into your heart. It is so good that your sins have been wiped out, and he's given you brand new life and a brand new start. That is so cool. 
but you've become part of something so much bigger than just getting saved. You're part of a big supernatural kingdom. And so he starts to describe it, and he says, no, you've come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God. Now, let it, let, when I'm reading this, open, open yourself up to how big God's kingdom is, to a heavenly Jerusalem, to countless thousands of angels in a joyful gathering. Amen? My goodness. How many hover around you? How many is God sent to keep the enemy from wiping you out? His angels that excel in strength, hearkening to the voice of God's word. Lord Jesus, let, move us from natural God. But you've come to the assembly of God's firstborn children, whose names are written in heaven. You've come to God himself, who's the judge over all things. You've come to the spirits of righteous ones in heaven who have now been made perfect. Keep going, please. You've come to Jesus, the one who mediates the new covenant between God and people and to the sprinkling of blood which speaks forgiveness instead of crying out for vengeance like the blood of Abel. I'm pausing for you. Yeah. That's it? Oh. Talk amongst yourselves. Hebrews, what did I give you, 12? Where did I stop? Cool. All right, here we go. To Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel, see that you don't refuse him uh, who speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, much more shall they not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven. Um, Is that all I gave you, really? Hmm. Rejoice. <laughs> Listen, you belong to a supernatural kingdom, amen? What else did I give you? Did I give you Luke in the amp? Okay, let's do that. Thank you, Luke. Thank you for coming to the rescue, Luke. It says, given will be given to you. They will pour into your lap a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, with no space left for more. For with the standard of measurement that you use, when you do good for others, it will be measured back to you in return. Amen. Thank you for the save, Luke. So here's what I want to do. Can you all please stand up? Creek. Healing service. There is a beautiful supernatural grace that we can join together in today. Um, Father, thank you for the ability to give today. Thank you that you've been so good to us. And Lord, you've poured out on us so much. And I'm asking, Lord, that with hearts of gratitude, we would give back today. Lord, even looking at those pictures and the kids and the families and those that don't even have clean drinking water, and Father, there is enough people in this place today. There is enough of what you've done today. There's enough of an outworking today. Lord, we could actually change that. This house, this room, Father, if we got together and Lord, we gave, we could change what's happening there right now. When you said to do good, 
Lord, your word, it actually means mighty power of God. So, Lord, it is in our ability to do it. And even if our number doesn't match what they need, God, you're a supernatural God. You increase. Man, people brought you fish and bread and said it's not enough, and you increased it. So, Lord, I'm asking that even today, God, you would, uh, in fact, ushers, do we have the ushers here right now? If you could, do we have envelopes as well? Ushers, can you grab the envelopes from the back? Yeah, they're at the greeter table, I think. And Adrian, if you're here too, come on up. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, we do e-transfer as well. Yeah, you can mark it. That's fine. But uh, I just think there's, a, there's such an opportunity today. There's such an opportunity. So, Father, we thank you this morning again for opportunity to give and make a difference. And, Lord, could it actually be that this church, that this service today could change the future and the hope and the destiny because we decided to partner with the mighty power of God that you call good and to be thankful today. Jesus. Jesus. If, if you need an envelope, would you just put up your hand right now and we'll have the ushers get some to you? Yeah, Angie, you can come and just do the administration part. Please. And just say what they need to do. Uh, just on your envelope, you'll mark in the designated giving part, you can put Zambia in there, and we'll make sure that 100% of what you mark to Zambia, that we'll just send it. We'll cut a check this week and send it out. Pardon me? Or water, if you don't know how to spell Zambia. So, yeah, thank you, Lisa, making it easy. Yeah, I also wanted to say, uh, will you hold on? If, uh, if you don't have money to give, I have $60, so I could give three people $20. And if you just are in a place like in your heart, you feel like you would give, but you just don't have it, I would give you this. So no shame on it. Yeah. If you don't have anything to give today, there's no shame in it. Yeah. There you go. Is there, is there more? Yeah, no, thank you for giving. That's how God works. Anyone else for real? For real. Okay, thank you, Lord. I'll give that to you then. Okay, can you put the, the Luke scripture back up there, please? Because we're going to pray over it and give. Thanksgiving is a is a supernatural grace that God gives. And when he pours his love on it, it turns into gratitude, which is an expression. But if you catch anything today, catch this. God's kingdom is not a natural kingdom. On the day that we pass, on the day that we go uh, to leave this planet, you're going to want a supernatural kingdom to become awfully real. And here's one of the beauties about his word. When you give, it will be given to you. And he'll pour into your lap a good measure. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over with no space left for more. For with the standard of measurement you use, when you do good, supernatural empowerment, God-like power to others, it'll be measured back to you in return. So Lord, even today we're not giving because we're forced to or guilted to. But God, this is a supernatural kingdom that you've given us. And today we choose to partner with your kingdom. Could it be, Lord, that you would change the lives of those in Zambia? And could it also be, Lord, that just by our giving today, you can change the lives of people that are in here? Father, you know the needs of people in here. You already know. So, Lord, would you bless this awesome church? Would you bless these peoples? and everyone that gives. I'm asking that the loaves and fishes would happen. Would you multiply this? Like, Lord, crazy multiply this. And would you also, uh, uh, as, you, as you multiply back to us, I'm asking for the revelation of your kingdom, that nothing in your kingdom goes to waste. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
Yeah, actually, guys, let's do it like this. If, if we have that box at the back where Don is standing, uh, it's been prayed over. There's been anointing oil on it. You may need someone to carry you back if you put your hands on it, just because the power of God will be that strong as you do it. But yeah, if you can, if you can do that, just drop your envelope back where Don is, and if it's out in the, the foyer that you're going to go do the e-transfer, you can do that too. Yeah, so please go ahead and do that. Before we close, is there anyone here, you have a praise report and you just want to, to just let that out and just be thankful for what God's done in you and for you? Would you have the courage to come up and do that? Don't make me get out Luke again. I was talking to somebody this week that was going through a really hard time financially and struggling with all sorts of issues in their lives and uh, I was really feeling a spirit of heaviness and I was praying to the Lord as I was talking to this person on the phone and I was like Lord I don't have a physical answer to give this person as to help their problems but he reminded me that to put on a garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness and to just, like a child, to simply say thank you for absolutely everything in their lives. Thank you for running water on my tap. <laughs> thank you for my eyesight. Thank you for, I can smell, I can see, I can taste, you know, all of these things. And thank you for this peanut butter sandwich and a banana on the counter. Every little thing, and not in a mocking way, but in a thankful way. And to just really be thankful for the littlest things, and it will lift, and it truly does. It really lifted, the spirit of heaviness lifted. Amen. Amen. My, my mom was not doing good. And in fact, when I previously, when I talked to her on the phone, she could barely get her voice out, and it sounded pretty bad. And so we prayed, and I knew that there's others praying. And the next time I phoned, it was like a miracle it happened. And she said that her lungs went from 40% now to 90%. She's almost completely restored when I thought she was going to die. So my dad, my dad goes in for surgery, pretty serious surgery, and comes out. And I like this part about my dad. He's pretty stubborn. And so he waits for... Uh, a taxi, and I can see my dad. If it didn't show up in 10 seconds, it was too long. I ain't waiting any longer. He walks home. Three, I think, three city blocks or whatever after a surgery. He just says, I ain't waiting anymore. Walks home. He's done totally, the, like the guy's restored. 82 years old. Just praise God. Jesus, we're asking this. Um, twofold, Lord, I'm going to say that God, would you multiply that place in Zambia? We're asking that a well would be dug and that clean water would come out. And Father, that it wouldn't just be abundant, but supernatural abundant in Jesus' mighty name. Would you multiply the money that we're, we're giving God in Jesus' name? That was one. And two is this. Lord, would you cause us today to be grateful and thankful. Lord, I'm not speaking about the problems that people are going through. That's real stuff. Lord, those are like the five issues that we worship today and all the real things that happen in life. You said that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but you deliver them from them all. I'm asking this today, that true gratitude and thankfulness would come welling up because God, we know that it's a supernatural force and when thankfulness starts to come up mixed with your love, it becomes supernatural. And nothing is impossible for those who are with you in that state. So would you do that as well? Even this weekend, Lord, 
even for supper today or tomorrow or the people that we're going to call if we can't be with them, would you cause just a thankful, grateful heart to come? Jesus. I love that we can be thankful. And you know what Zambia needs? They don't need her pity. They need her generosity, and they got it today. And so, you know, even being thankful about that, some of you have dinner waiting at home or you're doing tomorrow, is you can be thankful that not only did you cook a Thanksgiving dinner or attend a dinner, but you also helped Zambia. So you can't say that for every weekend. But there is one reason that we know that we can help, and that's Jesus Christ. And there is a place where each of us have had to actually, Jesus became real. And so a lot of times we'll meet people and say, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm a Christian. There's like, okay, um, when did he become real to you? It's like, oh, I don't know. My mom just always told me about him. And I, you know, I've gone to church the whole time. And do you know that you can be in church and still miss the greatest gift of all is Jesus Christ. And so we don't want to miss an opportunity to share this generous Jesus with you. And even you online on our Facebook community, whether you listen to this in live time or in a later time, we're going to pray a prayer where we open our hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the king of generosity. He is the reason that we can smile. He is the reason that we can cry. He is the reason that we can be afraid and comforted. He is the reason that we can rejoice and, and have fun with one another. Amen. So if there's any in this room that you have never really met the real Jesus, we want to pray for you today. Everyone in here who already knows Jesus had somebody call out sometime or someone pray for them, and they made a step. They made that decision to say, it's me. I don't know Jesus. And so if that's you in this room, there's no pressure on you, but there's all of heaven for you and all of hell is against you. I promise you when you ask Jesus into your heart, the scales tip. So is there anyone in this room that you would say that that's you? Thank you, Lord. And even for those online, if that's you, Jesus has a plan for you for real. So if you'll just stand with me, maybe you know someone who needs the Lord. Let's pray this together. Say, say this with me. Say, Lord, I've heard your word today. I know that you're generous. And you care for Zambia. And you care for me. I believe that you did die on that cross. But you didn't stay dead. You rose again. I'm sorry for where I've hurt you or where I've sinned against you. Please forgive me. Jesus, generous Jesus, God of the universe, I invite you to come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Save me in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You can be seated for a moment. And we're going to go out and have coffee and enjoy each other in a moment. Um, how many of you have got friends from the past, but maybe you, you're not in contact with them anymore, anything like that? I, I, I've just been dwelling on this. I mean, um, everyone's got a past. And in that past, uh, I had some very, very interesting friends and uh, very colorful. And they were extremely entertaining because they were very impulsive. And what you could count on them is them doing something extremely impulsive and memorable. But I've just been dwelling on them lately. I just believe that even in this season, there's a grace for you to contact friends that you haven't contacted for years and years and years in the vein of thankfulness. 
if God could save someone, I was going to say me, if God could save someone like Don, he can save anyone. Amen? Come on up for a moment, Don. See, the Bible says as far as the east is from the west, that's how far he's removed our transgressions from us. Amen? And I'm thinking I got a pretty colorful past, and then I'm looking at Don and going, whoa, <laughs> that's technicolor right there. <laughs> Some of y'all were kind of gray. That's colorful. Yeah. So I kind of, I kind of, I kind of think of myself sometimes as, man, I was the chiefest of sinners, and I hung around with the chiefest of sinners. And Don, same thing. But the thing is this, especially on a, on a, a weekend of Thanksgiving, if God would save someone like this here and cause us to be called sons and daughters, then the guys that I'm thinking about, these friends from 30 years ago who were colorful, why would God not want to save them? And what if it's just a, hey, how you doing? I know it's been 30 years, or hey, what are you up to? What if just something like that was a seed that started to be planted and God would save them too? Somebody said that about me. Somebody was rejoicing in their own salvation and being thankful, and they, and they would go, if you could save someone like me, that Darren guy, I wonder if you could save him too. Or that Don guy, I wonder if you could save him too. And he did. Amen. So, Father, if you could do this, could it be that a man could be saved in one day? Could it be that a nation could be restored in one day? Nothing is impossible for you and for those who believe in you. So, Father, thank you for bringing to mind friends, maybe their family, maybe their acquaintances, maybe whatever it is. God, I pray that it would come up in prayer. And as you would bring that person, would you... Uh, Lord, cause the connections in Jesus' name. So we bless you, Lord. Lord, let the Thanksgiving turkeys be blessed. Let fat be eliminated. And let it just be a blessed time together in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thanks, Don. You're awesome. So do we have super drinks? Pumpkin spice latte or regular coffee. Amen. So get around Don and let him tell you some of his colorful stories and be entertained and you'll feel good about yourself. <laughs> uh, amen. All right. Bless you guys.